So you know how everyone uses the Stormcaller top tree with Crown of Tempest for pretty much 90% of the content game? The same way players use Nazarak Sin as the bread and butter for all Void builds. Well, I believe we've come up with an alternative version to that build that will follow in the same footsteps as Crown of Tempest and top tree Stormcaller, but with much more damage being offered in the long run. What I have come up with will require the use of Volatile Reduction mod and Storm Dance's Brace Exotic, with both offering increased damage the longer our super is out. Now I can't outright say this will become the new meta for Storm Callers because of the requirements behind it, but I can see it being an effective ultra on boss DPS build if you can time your super right, and the results from my end have been very promising to say the least. Hello everyone, 3 Hero here and welcome back to today's build session for Destiny 2. I hope you're all keeping safe out there, no matter where you are in the world. Today we're going to dive into the use of two items that have been long forgotten, which are Storm Dancer's Brace Exotic and Volatile Conduction Mod, with the further support of the Top Tree Stormcaller at play. The idea here is to provide you with one of the best and most highest damaging Stormcaller builds at your pleasure, and to also get you out of your comfort zone from using the Crown of Tempest all the time. This isn't a dig at the exotic at all, but I think now would be a great time and place to try and rival the popular build with something akin to it, but somewhat appealing to the DPS craze players out there. So the subclass that we will be using is the Tumult of Conduction, and this is to make full use of his perks as not only will they come in handy for the clearing out groups of enemies through chain lightning effects, but also the ability to extend our super for longer. The Atomic Conduction is a popular subclass that players use in PvP because of its Chain Lightning effect which has the destructive capability of wiping out a whole team if distance is provided. This makes the subclass very deadly in team based modes and can lead to easy wins if the team doesn't know how to adapt to it. For PvE use, it's great for taking out groups of enemies easily by just a grenade or melee and doesn't require any more thought than that. One great thing the Chain Lightning perk can do is activate against a more tougher enemy and proc his ability to nearby minor or mages as well, creating a sort of arc web within his reach. Although useless against the major or ultra for example, it can make taking out his buddies a lot more easier for you, so you can focus more on the DPS side of things. Along with the Chain Lightning effect, the arc web perk also activates which provides grenade NG back and thus we can repeat the process again and again and again for a total lockdown of the area. However, the most biggest thing at the subclass is the perk Transcendence, which once activated, extends your super and provides full health upon activation. This is where we will be able to make full use of our super, so we can do more damage for longer and without the use of Tempest Crown. The trick here is to always proc the perk so that our Zotic and Mod when both combined will have a much longer and deadly effect on enemies, and this is very easy to do for whenever we are ready to pop it. As the super is the main bread and butter of the build, our focus should always be to get our super up as quickly as possible, so we can get the big damage numbers in there and now. Now how you go about this is entirely down to you. For the grenades, I would recommend the arc bolt if you wish to rely on the chain lightning effect with it kicking in the most, but if you want to focus more on damage, then the pulse grenade is also really good as well. To be honest, all three of the grenades are viable for PvE and can work to great effects in the right areas, which I must say is a positive compared to the void or solar subclasses grenades, which feel limited in their capacity. For weapons, flexibility is available for your choosing as long as you have one mass work weapon, and preferably a weapon with the demolitionist perk. Within the primary slot, I've gone with the new Iron Banner, the Forward Path AR, with a very good roll of Swashbuckler, Dynamic Spray Reduction, and Steady Rounds. Keeping up with this 600 RPM trend, the Forward Path has some very good stats on the get go in terms of its stability, handling, and the reload speed. Its perks are the run of the mill standard perks to look out for, for a 600 RPM, so there's nothing else here for the weapon that will make it special within the build, except for the Swashbuckler perk. It's definitely up there when compared to the Summoner or Gnawing Hunger, and I do recommend you get one for the coming next season since we don't know what the meta will be like, and this AR comes with some exclusive perks that only it and the sidearm can currently roll with, which are Iron Gaze and Iron Grip. These two perks can actually change how the weapon performs stat wise to a large degree, something that we don't see a lot of but is interesting as it can turn a weapon for example into an SMG if we have the Iron Gaze perk active, 
or it can make our weapon extremely stable if we have the iron grip perk active. Alternatively, for activating the volatile conduction mod, using the Tommy's matchbook for his self inflicting burns is also a great choice to use, as you'll be able to use your mod once you've hit max super and can fit in the missing requirement whenever you're ready. For our secondary, I've chosen the Timeline's Vertex Fusion Rifle with Demolitionist Shield Disorientate and Liquid Coils. The Fusion Roll is perfect for the PvE content I decide to use it in, and what I would ideally go for when I need something that's great for clearing up ads quickly, but also hits hard. Shield Disorientate is a 50-50 perk to have, as it only really works when the enemy you use it against has these solar shields, so Hive Witch for example. Now, when it works, its effects is large and wide, and can provide enough breathing room to focus on something else while everyone else is still stuck in the daze. In my case here, I would use my melee or grenade to prop my chain lightning and let it do the rest from there. Demolitionist on the other hand is a perk that will work out great for the build as I will make full use of my grenades for the chain effect, which will activate arc web and return grenade energy back, which will also allow me to build up my super faster. In all honesty, a side arm or shotgun with the perk is also optional as well, so you're not left in the dark with just picking one weapon. Now my reasoning behind this is because it has a bit more reach compared to using a shotgun or sidearm, which allows me to stay behind cover and also reduce incoming damage depending on how open the area is that I'm in. I'm also using the light reactor mod to gain super energy back, which I switch in between using the ashes to assets mod, so as you can see, if you have the room and the mods available, you freely switch between what best fits for you. For the heavy side of things, I've gone with the Falling Guillotine Sword with Whirlwind Blades and Energy Transfer, mainly to be used when facing bosses or ultras. This weapon and its role will provide a massive damage boost against anything you go up against, and I find that it's a perfect to use after you finish using your super against said tough enemy, as you can stack your damage in one go and pretty much take out a large chunk of a boss's health in a short time frame, if done correctly. I would recommend you try and get one with the energy transfer perk as it will allow you to gain back ability energy upon blocking, and there's quite a decent size you do get back as well, so it is something worth investing in. For the stats, your main focus will be your intelligence as we need to get that as high enough level as possible, so that we can make use of our super a lot more often. Now at 70, I will get a 4 minute 7 second cooldown, which when combined with my super regen mods, orbs of light generation and general kills, will be more than enough to get my super up and running within a few minutes. Now of course I could push this higher by moving some of my armor pieces around, however, this will result in uneven stats in certain areas, so it's not something as easily achievable if you don't balance out your other important stats as well, such as your resilience and recovery. At 100, we can get a 3 minute 48 second cooldown, which more or less, does mean we can regen our super much more quicker, but if you have these super regen mods available then it's not worth investing in. Now, recommended wise, aim for the 70 to 90 ranges for the sweet spot, and for that you will need to play around with it until you find something that's comfortable for you. For resilience and recovery, they are both within the 40 ranges as this is to help with activating our volatile conduction mod much more quicker. You only need to have your resilience around this level, your recovery can be a lot more higher as you please as this will only affect how quickly you will recover your health, and even then, that's not really a big issue as you're activating your transcendence perk which can offer you a full health back when its requirements are met. Now for the armour, the Storm Dancer's Braid Exotic will be required for the set, no specific affinity is required unless you want something to correspond with the weapon you're using. The rest of the armour will require you to have 2 Void Affinity armour pieces for the Charge by Light mods, and then 1 Solar Affinity class mod, so you can make use of the Super Regen mods. Now, with all that covered, here are the mods we are currently using, which I will go in a bit more depth afterwards. For your head, you will need the Resilience and Protective Light mod, Arm, Intelligent and Stacks and Stacks mod, Chest, Intelligence mod, Leg, Recovery and Taking Charge mod, Bond, Concussive Dampler, Volatile Conduction, and Ashes to Assets mod. Now with the build set up and complete, you should now have a super powerful arc subclass at your disposal that can stack damage and wipe out the higher level mobs with ease, going from majors, ultras to even bosses to some degree, and I can say that this is the best damage focused arc subclass in game for the time being in terms of bringing out the big numbers for a warlock class primarily focused on ad clearing. 
Now when we look at the terminal control subclass, it's not expected to see a subclass focus on stacking damage and using it against a boss for DPS, as in practice, the damage done isn't enough to warrant it and is best used on ads that focus on protecting said boss instead. However, tinkering around with the idea and experimenting to see what you can achieve is something that we can do on our end. And results gathered shows that it's possible, with a downside to it of course. Now here are some testing that I did on my end. Now against the ogre in the tribute hall, using my base super it caps out at 4372. And from looking at my super left over, the damage isn't so great as it's practically all my super gone, and to me personally, gone to waste. Now with ascending amplitude at times 5 from my exotic, this maxes my super damage to 7705 instead, which is around a 3k increasement, which isn't so bad, but nothing too shabby to fall over. Now, when we combine the ascending amplitude at times 5, our base super, and the volatile reduction mod for a 30% damage increasement, our damage now caps at a whopping 10,016, which as you can see, chews through the OA health incredibly quickly and is the highest the common subclass can reach in terms of damage. The new damage number now basically makes it that taking on multiple ultras at once with all 3 buffs active becomes less of a chore to deal with and more appreciative to take them all out in one go. And then whilst we still have a bit of super left over as well, we can then mop up any leftovers from there. And this is something that is not only easy to use by players, but interesting to see not many people utilise the combo to its full extent. And I can see one of the reasons being that to get the fullness of the build going, you will need to get your health low to activate the volatile reduction mod, which for many is not something they would wish to do. Of course, if you have the protective light mod available, you can utilise this to have a damage reduction for a few seconds. On top of that, if you meet the requirements for the Transcendent subclass perk, then you'll get your whole health back by activation. So this should place your worries at rest while still utilising the whole build. I do personally believe the build will vary for users depending on what they are after in content, as this type of build is great for the clustered areas and can make full use of its damage stacking there and then. However, if damage isn't what you're after and you just want a more simpler take on the build, then using the Crown of Tempest and going from there is probably more up your street. It's definitely worth trying at least once in a season for something different, as it won't overthrow the Crown of Tempest meta at all. But it may fill in an area that the Tempest can't do, and when that time does come, and someone needs a build that can offer maximum damage while clearing out large groups of enemies in a single go, then I can see this build here shining out the most. So that is the end of the video, I do hope you enjoyed it. If you enjoyed the video, then by all means please do leave a like and a sub. Also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny content if you dig that type of stuff, link is down below. But once again, thanks for stopping by and I'll see you guys in the next one.